Hi cuties! I hope you guys are doing so well. Today I am finally trying out gel from LGN Pro. This is actually a nail gel brand made by Lizette Cruz here on YouTube. I picked up this package like a really long time ago. I feel like I say this almost every single video now, but I've had this package for such a long time ever since you guys told me that she has like the best rhinestone glue gel. So when I ordered the rhinestone glue gel, I decided to order some of her builder gel as well, uh, just so I could like try out everything because what she mostly does is builder gel. So yeah, we're gonna be trying this out today finally I'm so excited but I'm also going to be trying out a new e-file for Melody Susie I am an affiliate with Melody Susie so they went ahead and sent me their new s series e-file and this one only goes up to 30,000 rpm usually e-files go up to 35,000 but I actually think it's a really good option if you were like just starting out with an e-file because oh oh it's on it is on because it's honestly not really necessary to go all the way up to 35,000 RPM unless you are like removing some really hefty bulky acrylic. Honestly, I think I will really benefit from this as well because I need to learn to be a little bit more patient and a little bit more gentle with my e-file. So here she is. Um, I accidentally turned her on. Let's just turn her back off. Oh, this is so cute. It's so small. Oh my goodness. Okay, just for reference, here is my other e-file from Melody Susie. I think this one is their M series and this one is the S series one. So like, oh, this this one is like so small and cute and I love, love that it is white and rose gold because pink is amazing. <laughs> And then here is the little handheld piece and it's not like skinny like my other one. So yeah, if that's something that you care about a lot, that's just something to take note of. Now let's see what else we've got in here. Ooh, lots of stuff down below. We've got some basic cuticle bits and a mandrel, some sanding bands for the mandrel. This is the wire to connect the pen to the drill. And then here's the charging wire. And I love that it charges with a uh, USB-C. Pretty sure that's what this is called. I love that that's what it charges with because I have so many of these wires around my house. And then here's a little part that attaches to the drill so that we can put the pen on it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let me just put this together real quick. Cute! Oh my goodness, I like it so much. It's so small. Oh my goodness. Uh, I actually love it. It's so cute. So I'm actually going to be starting off today's video doing something that I don't usually do, which is removing my previous set. As you've probably already noticed, I did already move my nail from my middle finger. This nail was actually the one that had previously lifted. So I went ahead and took off the extension that I had on it to cut down the part of the nail that had lifted because I realized that I should probably just cut off that lifted part so that it can start healing easier, quicker. So I went ahead and removed that one and added my Milky White Rubber Base Gel on there. And I know that probably the best idea if I wanted it to heal the quickest that it possibly could is to not put any gel or extensions on it or anything like that. But since it is my summer vacation and I was looking forward to filming a lot of nail videos in the next couple months, um, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna give it a break. We are just going to go a little bit shorter with our extensions and I'm going to try to be extra careful and we'll see what happens. But now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and remove these four extensions. I do have a complete video on how to remove gel nails, but just in case you need a refresher. And I've gotten a lot of questions about like if I remove my rubber base gel every time and stuff like that. So like, let's just get into it, shall we? Okay, so the first thing I always do when removing my gel nails is removing any of the charms, like this big cinnamon roll one, just like that. <laughs> and also any extra length from the extension, just like that. <laughs> and I actually get asked a lot whether or not I save my charms after I remove them. And here's a really good example of one that I would save because it is still in really good condition and it doesn't have a lot of gel that is like stuck on the sides and stuff. And any gel that is stuck like on the sides, I can just kind of scrape it off. And that little charm is still in perfect condition. So I'm actually just going to put it straight back into my charm organizer. However, little hearts like this one that I just removed, I don't bother saving that one because one, they're so small and 
it has like a whole bunch of gel stuck to it that I don't want to deal with. So I just go ahead and throw those away. So this star rhinestone charm thing is actually encapsulated in gel. So I'm not going to be able to remove those with these little nipper things. I'm just going to have to file it off and be careful when I do. I always wear a mask when I'm filing because I don't want to be inhaling a bunch of gel or acrylic dust or charm dust because that shite is most likely made out of resin. You don't wanna inhale resin dust into your lungs. Okay, now that we've got the length gone and most of the charms, it's time to take out your handy dandy e-file. And I think I'm just going to use the mandrel to do this with a nice gritty sanding band. So we'll just unlock this here and switch it out. Epic. And then if you notice, there is a pause button and a forward and reverse button on this e-file. I know not all e-files have a pause and a play button, but yeah, this one does. So just wanted to point that out. So let's start filing these bad boys. So I do always take out my dust collector when I'm doing a lot of filing or really like any filing at all because it just helps keep my space a lot cleaner. And even though I have my dust collector, I am also going to put on my mask. And I like to use an N95 mask because I feel like they're super secure. And also if you have like reading glasses or something or like blue light glasses, these are just like my reading and like computer glasses. I like to put on glasses as well because I have gotten far too many flecks of dust and nail particles flinged into my eyeballs. So yeah, gotta protect those bad boys. All right, so now that we're all prepped and protected from the filing dust, one thing that I would recommend to do with with your sanding band before you start filing is to just file the edge of your sanding band gently so that you don't get cut. It kind of softens it out a bit. And then I'm just going to file the top layer of gel off down to where I can see my milky white rubber base gel. And I'm gonna do that on speed 20. Okay, so you can see that I filed off like all of the gel polish and as much of like the gel that was holding the extension on as possible, like the nail glue gel. And now I'm left with just like this milky white base gel. So I do actually remove most of the milky white base gel every time because it's kind of hard not to without like just completely filing down a lot. And I'm just like not really good at filing. And I feel like, I don't know, I feel like it would just be harder for me to not remove it every single time. So I just remove it every single time. Also totally off topic, but look what I'm drinking you guys it's not an energy drink it's a lemon so oh my god i just poured it on my desk i'm so dumb you guys i'm so smart what anyway it's a lemon sorbet bubbly and it definitely tastes um not as good as an energy drink it's like not sweet at all but it has like a little bit of like an aftertaste that tastes really good I'm kind of tempted to add like some lemonade into it. So I might do that. Anyway, back to removing my gel. I'm gonna take out five of these little nail clip thingies and three cotton rounds. So one, two, three, perfect. I'm actually gonna cut all of the cotton rounds in half because you really don't need an entire cotton round to do this for each nail. So we're gonna have one extra one and I'm just gonna save it for later. And then I like using petroleum jelly, specifically Vaseline, but you can use um, just like cuticle oil, I guess. I just like using this to protect the skin around my nails because it's super thick. And then I just put that all around my finger, the back of my finger, 
just all around my nail, wherever the acetone might get onto because as you can tell, my cuticles and finger skin <laughs> is already quite crusty. So I would like to have it not be super terribly crusty. Um, so I am just going to apply that very generously. And then I have 100% acetone in this, but you wanna make sure that you're using 100% acetone. And I put like three pumps of that on there and place that cotton round on the gel, on my nail, and then crimp it in there. And now that is going to sit and marinate for around 20 minutes. So let me just get them applied to all of these now. I like to make sure that I am applying a pretty generous amount of acetone to each of the cotton rounds, especially if you are soaking off quite a thick layer of gel on your nails and you're gonna have to keep it on there for longer than just 10 minutes. Acetone does dry up really quick, so I just like to make sure the cotton round is really soaked in acetone so that it won't dry out. So I'm gonna let this soak for 20 minutes and after it's soaked, it should come off really easily. I'm just gonna scrape it off with my cuticle pusher and I'm going to reapply my rubber base gel real quick. And I'm gonna do that all off camera actually because I have an entire video explaining how I apply my rubber base gel. I will definitely put it up in the corner for you if you would like to know how I do that. But yeah, I'm just going to apply that really quick, not too interesting, and I will be right back so that we can do some epic big gel nails. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Okay. It's the next morning. I've got a rubber base gel on. There's no longer a face cam because my face is not important right now. What is important is the nails. Okay. Nobody cares about my face right now. Um, so time to get into the LGN Pro gels. Let's just do a little unboxing moment, shall we? The box did not come like crinkled like this and stuff. It's because I've had it for like a couple months at this point, like I said before, and it was because of how I stored it. So it came perfectly undamaged and such. Thank you for your purchase. And she wrote a little handwritten note down here that says, thank you, Anne. Aw, I love it. I don't think she knows that I'm doing this video or anything. I didn't tell her, but I'll be tagging her. So hopefully she'll see it. <laughs> so cute. Okay, I don't wanna ruin this but I'm probably going to because that's just who I am. Yep, and I've ruined it. Packing peanuts. This is so fancy. I got the crystal clear builder gel. I got the petal pink builder gel, of course, because I cannot resist a glittery pink. And then I got the ever famous no wipe rhinestone gel, which I'm super excited about. Okay, let's just open these up and see what we've got to work with. Ooh, oh my gosh, I love that this foil is so easy to remove. Okay, okay, this stuff is thick. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave that on there actually because I want to use whatever gel is stuck to the foil. And then I really want to see what this petal pink looks like. These little pots are so fancy. Oh my goodness. Yo. Oh, that is such a nice pink. Holy, oh, I love that pink so much. Oh my God. And it has like little gold diamond shimmers in it. Absolutely gorgeous. We're definitely gonna be using this on all of my nails today. And then the crystal clear. And it says that it's a hard gel. So I'm not exactly sure if this will soak off. Let me see if it says on the box. Oh, does not soak off. Okay, yes. So that is something to note is that this hard gel does not soak off. Hard gels usually don't soak off. Builder gels soak off. If you want your gel to soak off, make sure to look for a builder gel. This is a hard gel, um, so it's not going to soak off, but that's fine with me because I usually file down until my rubber base gel anyway, and then my rubber base gel does soak off. So that's not a problem for me, but that's just something to definitely keep in mind. I'm doing like such a poopy job of opening these. Ooh, that's so clear. It doesn't even look like there's anything in there. That's 
really epic actually. I'm usually not a big like builder gel, hard gel girly, if you know what I mean. I prefer either full cover tips or acrylic most of the time, but recently I've been really getting into and like more interested in building nails out of like builder gel and hard gel and like encapsulating and stuff with gel. So I'm really excited to try these today. Let's go get some tips on these bad boys because yeah, obviously they're not in any sort of condition to be building nails um, off of my natural nail. <laughs> So like I said before, I'm going to be keeping these extensions short or at least shorter than I usually do because I'm trying to get this nail to grow back out and heal. So I don't know if this is a good idea, but I really, really want to use these coffin tips that have the heart cut out in them because they're like so cute and I've only used them one time. And if I'm going to have short nails, they just, they're gonna need to have some sort of something else going Going on you know what I'm saying so I'm actually going to size these out and then turn them into half tips instead of full cover tips so you will see what I mean in just a second. And I'm doing an on the spot design today. So I did not plan these out in advance like I did with like my last set. I was debating planning them out in advance. I was going to draw them out while I was eating lunch, but it really just came down to not getting it done in time or like just not feeling like it. So here we are with no plan. And then the way I'm gonna turn them into half cover tips is I'm going to take this like pair of crusty cuticle nippers that I do not use on my actual cuticles and like skin. I reserve these for other purposes such as this moment. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to like clip kind of like a V out of this bottom part. And it's definitely not gonna be perfect, but it doesn't really need to be, okay? It really does not need to be. And boom, we've got a half cover tip. <laughs> Super jank, but it'll work. So I'm just gonna do that to all of them now. Epic. So just like that, we've got some makeshift half covered tips. So yesterday when I put my rubber base gel on, I actually put like a really thin, quick top coat on it because I noticed that whenever I like do the rubber base gel the night before and don't put a top coat, if there's any little like bubbles in the top coat, they kind of get like dirty dust stuck in them and then it doesn't look too great. So from now on, if I'm planning on like waiting a day or two before I actually do my nails after I remove my previous set, I'm just going to put a top coat on the rubber base gel. So since I do have that top coat on there, I'm just gonna quickly rough it up with my file because top coat does not tend to stick too well to other gels. And if I leave the top coat on there, they will most likely peel off. And then really quick, I'm just going to etch my makeshift half cover tips with some acid-free primer, but you can also do this with your e-file. Some prefer to do it with their e-file because they feel like it's more secure, but I've never had any issues doing it with my primer. So that's what I like to do. I'm just gonna put those on using my nail glue gel as usual and my gooseneck lamp. Y'all know the drill. Oop. And since these are actually like full cover tips that I turned into half cover tips, I'm definitely going to need to use more nail glue gel than I usually would because I'm gonna have to fill in that gap from like the apex. going to just try to be really extra careful with this middle nail that lifted that I'm trying to grow back out. I'm 
So all the tips are on now. I gave them a full 60 second cure after I got them all on and I actually just went in with a top coat underneath of them to keep them clean and filed up the shape a little bit just to make sure it's extra crisp. So now let me tell you what I've got planned for these bad boys. I'm gonna start off with the pink petal color and I'm gonna make the entire nail pink. But then I also want to use these stickers. These stickers are so cute. How absolutely freaking perfect for summer. Like what? That's so cute. Oh my goodness. Okay, so definitely gonna use these. And also, since I do want to use the clear to do some encapsulation, I figured that I would take this opportunity to put a whole bunch of random confetti glitter shapes inside of them as well, like around the stickers. So I've got out a whole bunch of glitter. So that's the plan. So let's just do it. The instructions for the builder gel or the hard gel did say to start with a base gel. So I'm going to just first apply a base gel to all of these. And I do realize with all of the different layers of gel, I'm probably going to lose the heart shape a little bit, like the heart cut out in the tip, but that's fine because at the very end, after all the encapsulating and such, I'm just gonna go back in with my file and kind of carve the shape back out again. Okay, so I've got the base coat fully cured and it is time to go in with the petal pink color. And I'm just gonna use this like oval brush from Melody Susie. I've really been liking this brush, but any like round oval or like flat brush will do. I'm gonna start by only getting a little bit of the gel on the brush and creating like a really thin sort of slip layer and then this will make it a lot easier to put the rest of the gel on because gel like sticks to other gel, if that makes sense. So you just wanna put a really thin layer over the whole nail. And now that I've got that, I'm going to get a much larger amount of gel. Probably should have opened this a little bit better. <laughs> My bad. And then I'm going to kind of float the gel over the whole nail. And I'm really trying to keep it thin because I know that I want to do encapsulating and put like stickers and glitters. I don't want these nails to be insanely chunky. So usually you'd want to really try to build a nice apex, but for now, I'm just trying to get a layer of the color over the whole nail because we will build the apex when we encapsulate with the clear. And then after I've got it applied like that, I'm just gonna flip my nail upside down for like, I don't know, 30 seconds, just so that it helps the gel to like self level a little bit because the nice thing about using builder gel or like hard gel is that it does like self level until you're ready to cure it. And that looks like a pretty even coverage to me. So I'm gonna stick it in my lamp for just 30 seconds. And then now it's nice and flash cured so that it's not going to move around while we do the rest of the nails. So now I'm actually just going to repeat that exact same process for the other four of them. And I just have to say that I am literally so in love with this color of pink. It is like the most beautiful bubblegum pink color and it's just like touching my heart and soul of how pretty it is. I literally might expire because my eyeballs are just being so blessed right now. <sighs> Deep breaths, I just, I, this color of pink, I just love it so much. Also, this gel is quite easy to work with and usually I get like a trillion air bubbles because I'm not very good at working with builder gel and the more that you move around and touch builder gel, the more bubbles that occur and bubbles aren't fantastic, but I'm actually not getting many air bubbles with this, which is really nice. The consistency of this gel is also just so nice. I feel like it's so like soft and like stretchy. I don't know how to explain it. It just, it looks and feels amazing. That's all I can say.
Okay, so they're all fully cured and I wiped the sticky layer off of them because they did have a pretty thick sticky layer. And oh my goodness, honestly, I was kind of expecting to not have a great time doing that because usually whenever I'm working with like builder gel or poly gel even, like working with any sort of like building gel, I get super frustrated for some reason. It's just like, it frustrates me, but this, I was very pleasantly surprised. I actually really enjoyed that and it was like super easy to work with. Now we've got the layer of pink. Obviously I did not build an apex on these or anything because like I said, we are going to encapsulate. So time to put on a bunch of stickers and glitters. Glitter, glitter. So I'm actually gonna take out the bling gel to do this because I like using rhinestone gel even to just put on stickers. And I'm just gonna take a little bit, not too much, just a very small amount. And I'm gonna put it over my whole nail. So now I'm just gonna stick some stickers and glitter into that layer of rhinestone glue gel. Oh my goodness, I absolutely love these hollow sparkle glitters. Aren't they literally so fabulous? Oh my goodness, bling stress, lol. <laughs> um, I got these from Michaels, just saying. This is your reminder to check out the glitter at Michaels whenever you go because I find epic glitter at Michaels. Also, if you're wondering where I got these stickers, AliExpress, AliExpress. Oh my goodness, the amount of adorable nail stickers that I have found on AliExpress is actually insane and it really hurt my credit card very badly. I may or may not, like a, within like the past like month or so, ordered like 50 different nail stickers and am low-key sort of planning on doing like just a nail sticker video and like organizing all of my nail stickers into like a super cute little book. So yeah, I love nail stickers so much. to break out the crystal clear for some encapsulation. So basically the same process as with the pink. First, we're just gonna do a nice slip layer, like a thin layer of the gel over the whole nail, like a so. And then just getting a much larger amount. There's definitely like some little glitters still on my brush <laughs> from the pink one, but I don't mind. It's no biggie. And now, we're just gonna float that over all of the glitters and the sticker and everything. And this time I'm going to be trying to make more of an apex and like build the structure of the nail better. Some of these glitters are pretty thick, so they might be a little harder to encapsulate and get like fully covered in the gel. And definitely holding it upside down for a while. And you can also kind of like use your brush and kind of Make sure that the gel is towards the center like you want it to. 
And then once you are satisfied, I'm gonna hold it upside down and stick it in my lamp for 30 seconds. And I am gonna go in with my file after to fix everything up. So it's not super important that the shape is like absolutely 100% perfect, but it looks pretty good to me. So now just onto encapsulating all the rest of them. If you noticed, I did end up sticking mostly to like the star glitters and like confetti glitters because they were just what fit on the nail the best. I wish I had room to stick on some of those like heart clay pieces, but they were just like too big, unfortunately, because they would have been so cute. That clear builder gel had like the craziest dispersion layer I have ever like wiped off before. Like I had to wipe it like four times with a lot, a lot of isopropyl alcohol. It's just like so sticky and so thick of a sticky layer. I cured it for literally 120 seconds, like two 60 second intervals on like the highest heat setting. So I know for sure that they're fully cured, definitely. They've just got a pretty sticky dispersion layer, which is no biggie. Really doesn't make a difference in how the product works, I don't think at least. But now it's time to do some filing. This gel was like super easy to control. So I was actually able to not flood my cuticles at all, which is actually kind of crazy. Like it was easier for me to not flood my cuticles than it is like when I'm using poly gel. So really I'm just going to kind of perfect the shape even more. So the first thing I'm doing is just going back and forth over the entire nail with my sanding band and my e-file is set to like level 12. The next thing I'm doing is just taking the grittier side of my wooden file, which is the 100 grit side, it's the coarser side. And I'm just making sure that the side walls are nice and straight and the free edges are nice and sharp. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this like very tapered fine cuticle bit I'm gonna switch the sanding band out for this one. And then just at speed like seven or even lower, maybe speed six, I'm going to try to really carve out the heart in the tip of the nail just to make sure that it didn't get like lost in translation with all of the gel that we put on top of it. I did end up filing into the glitters and some of the stickers as well quite a bit. I kind of decided to sacrifice some of the glitters and the stickers for the shape of the nail because I just wanted them to have like a nice crisp shape. I think it worked out well because I think they're still gonna be pretty cute even though some of the stickers and glitters are filed, but honestly, you can't even tell. Like if I didn't tell you, you probably would not have even noticed, okay? Okay, it's fine. So now I'm gonna top coat it, but actually before I top coat them, I'm going to spurts them with my 91% isopropyl alcohol and give them a nice good brush with my 
nail brush because I just want to make sure there's no dust stuck in them, especially like in the little heart carvings because dust can definitely super easily get stuck in there. I think that they're good now though. I really love this top coat because it's so freaking shiny and it's from Amazon. So I also think that I'm almost completely out of it, but we're gonna use whatever I've got left and we're gonna top coat these bad boys. Yo, oh my goodness. Dude, that clear builder gel is so clear. Like that's actually marvelous. Oh my goodness, I love that so much. Yeah, the sides like over here is definitely where the glitters kind of got filed into because a lot of the thicker glitters were like sticking off the sides. I just wanted, I wanted the sides to be nice and straight and crisp, so yeah. Before I cure it, I'm gonna take a little micro Q-tip and like wipe out the heart a little bit because if a lot of gel gets cured in there, it kind of ruins the shape of the heart. And I'm just gonna flash cure that. Oh my goodness. Uh, these nails are so pretty. I love me a good like glittery kawaii set. Absolutely marvelous, fantastic, gorgeous, amazing. Oh my God, these are so freaking cute. I am almost done, almost done. There's just one last thing I wanna do and that is make a little dangle charm to put on my thumb with this little adorable butterfly because it feels wrong not to take advantage of the fact that there's holes in my nails. So we're putting a dangle charm and I'm gonna put it using this little lobster clasp. That way I can take it on and off if I need to do something and I don't wanna have something dangling from my fingers. So I'm just gonna open up this jump ring. Oh, this is kind of hard to do. So I'm just gonna attach the butterfly to the lobster clasp, like so. And then hopefully this fits in this little heart hole. Let's see. Oh my God, I did it. I have a little butterfly dangling from my nail. How cute. What? I think I put it on backwards. Oh, well, no, I guess it doesn't really matter. I think that's good. Yeah, I think that's good. I'm leaving it like that. I think that's cute. Epic, so adorable. I wish I had cuter charms, but I think this charm is pretty cute for now. I'll have to experiment with more dangly charms in the future. Anyway, cuties, that is it for today's video. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, definitely smash that thumbs up button. It helps me out a lot and I really, really, really do appreciate it. I love you guys so much. I hope that you are having the most amazing day, night, week, life. Sleep well if you're going to sleep, cutie. I will hopefully see you in the next one. Bye. Mwah.